Well then, buckle up because our next topic is a good one. Our next topic is going to be talking about finally making use of matrices in a practical way. It's more or less practical way. Um, practical in the sense that you can learn how to do new things with it. So, um, and what's that? And, and see, I didn't learn that until I came here and Mr. Meter taught me. Um, partly because I did have actually this calculator in college, which is capable of doing matrices, but either my professors were resistant or, or incapable of teaching us how to use this. They, the graphing calculators were pretty new at the time. Um, so it could be either of those. Nice. Um, but so we will be definitely using the calculators to help us solve these. I learned this technique in graduate school. Um, it's really nice and very powerful and we'll use it just on pretty simple uh, setups. But the calculator is a huge help. I, I can't remember how many times I would carefully write out the string of matrices, start multiplying them, get to the end, check my work and find out it was wrong somewhere. I didn't know where, so I'd get to do the whole thing over again. And the calculator will really, really uh, help that out. So for now, bring out homework 10.5. We're going to work through this section by section. I've got all of the notes sort of described in here, but I'll walk through so that you can ask questions and you can see it in practice as well as just see it on the page. What I'd like you to do first, though, is that intro problem. Um, consider a thin lens system. An object is located 0.85 meters from a convex lens with focal length of 0.50 meters. What's the distance between the lens and the image formed? Use the thin lens formula for this. And just, just as a practice one. So the thin lens equation, remember, it tells us that it's 1 over f is equal to 1 over do object distance plus 1 over di image distance, f is our focal length. We want to find the image distance, so I subtract the 1 over do from both sides. You get 1 over f minus 1 over do equal to 1 over di. Um, I then put these in my calculator at this point, so you can either do 1 over the focal length of 0.5 meters, or you could just put 0.5 for the negative 1, minus 1 over the object distance 0.85 meters or 0.85 meters over one and that's one over image distance and you got that like 0.82 did you say David yeah, so this works out to about 0.82 meters when you just solve it but that's one over the image distance so we have to invert that one so hit your x to the negative one and we get 1.21 meters for our image distance and I would anticipate any time you've got a single lens and you're trying to find out image distances, you're going to use this. You're not going to complicate things. Um, the matrix method is really, really powerful, but it is more complicated than that. And so maybe even two lenses like we saw with the microscope or the telescope are going to be easier under most circumstances using this. But we can do a lot more with the matrix method, and we're just going to introduce that now. So the first thing to consider is, any questions on this before we go on? Are we all OK with this, or getting OK with this? Yeah, and then we'd look at the magnification. Um, if we are drawing this, I want to consider what is actually happening to the light rays throughout this um, throughout this image formation. We've got our object here. Let's follow a light ray 
from the object to the image. And it could be any of the rays. We've got a light ray going from the object through air. That's sort of part one. Then it's interacting with this lens. That'd be part two. And then it's going on from the back side of the lens to wherever the image form is formed, some distance away, which is section three. And then if we did another one, we could see exactly where that got us. Okay, and our image would be over here. We already determined 1.21 meters away from our lens. Um, the way that we use this with the matrix method is to treat each of these sections as its own two by two matrix. And then to figure out where the image will be formed, we take the product of those matrices and solve for the one thing we don't know, typically, which is what is this distance out here? Because we can set up where our object is, so we know the object distance. We can measure out the focal length, or just read it off a package depending on what we have. So we know the focal length, and what we don't know is this image distance. So let's talk about how to do that. Section one is called a translation. Um, and whenever we translate through a material, we will use a translation matrix. These make, this matrix will always have the same form. So I'll, call, I'll label it with a T. And it is one, zero, right? Yeah. One, and then the only thing that's not one or zero is down here. And this is a distance divided by the index of refraction of that material. And this would go for anything. So our first section, where we're going through air, that would be a translation matrix. The lens is different. But then after the lens, we translate again, again through air. So the first and the second, or first and third, would actually look both quite similar because they're both going through air. Then in between there, section two, we actually have a thin lens. We're only going to do some of the simple stuff, so we're only going to look at thin lenses. And any thin lens will also have a matrix. Um, this is a refraction, so we're gonna cut, label it with an R. And any refraction matrix is going to have the general form of one, zero, one, but now one over the focal length. When we want to solve and see how, where does this eventual image form, we form, let's see what term did I use it, the, the system matrix. And a system matrix is the product of these in reverse order. So a system matrix, which I labeled as M, it's going to have, actually start at the image and work backwards. So starting at the image here and working backwards, we've got a translation first off, then the lens, so a refraction, and then the translation back to the uh, object. And so we have, I'd label that as a T2, since that's our second translation a refraction, I don't really need a number since there's only one in this case. And then the first translation from the object to the lens. Let's look at what that looks like then if we put in the matrices like we've seen. So translation here, one, zero, one, and then we're going to use the distance traveled divided by the index. How far did the light beam travel in this third section? DI. We, well, we know now 1.21, but to start the problem, we didn't know. So 
So it's it's a di. It's it's an unknown distance, but it's the image distance that we call it. So I'd have a di here, our unknown. What about the index of refraction there? We're not going through glass. We're going through air, which would make it one. Um, we will use other materials just as sort of way to practice this, but right, we're, we could go through glass in this method, but in this case, it's just it was just air surrounding it. We had a refraction matrix, which has the four um, one zero one, and then minus one over the focal length, which we said was half a meter. And then we have our first translation, since we're working backwards. So our little translation, one, zero, one. Distance, the, this will be the object distance, which we were given, 0 0.85 meters. What's the index of refraction there? One, there again, yep. Okay, so that's what our matrix looks like. We can definitely simplify these a little bit by dividing stuff out. So our unknown image distance that we want to find is there. Um, one divided by one half is two, and its units are technically meters over one. Make sure that you're using what it, you could use either units, centimeters, meters, whatever as long as you're consistent throughout this. And then our final one, one zero point eight five meters, one. And in practice, as long as I'm careful using meters, I actually drop them out after this. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so when you do put that in your calculator, does is the calculator able to read it's going to be two Yes, you can do the 1 over 0.5, that's okay. Or you can do, the, or as long as it's negative, and negative 2 here, and obviously you won't have the units in there. So um, when we are doing this now, um, there is sort of a trick to make this as easy as possible, to let you use your calculators as much as possible. Um, my calculator, I don't know, but I assume yours as well, doesn't deal well all the time with uh, with variable, thank you. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to multiply every other one, and I'm going to come up with something that I have to work a little bit with manually, but the product of just this matrix and another matrix. And we don't even need to multiply out all of that. So our next step is actually to take any of these, and it could be 2, it could be 30. We won't do 30, but it could be. Um, and we can we need to multiply all of those together. So the next step is to the calculators, Batman. Um, we need to add matrices to this. So you will notice um, on the TI style anyway, three down from our second function is matrix. So it's, yeah, it's, it's on the second function and then the x to the negative 1. I need to define what our, my matrices are. So I'm going to label this one, and it, I've already got a bunch in here from previous years, apparently. I'm going to label this one as my A and this one as my B so that I can do that. I need to scroll over from names to edit and then select that I want, the one I want to edit. Hit enter and... I'm going to enter in the values that I have in this first matrix. So 1, 0, negative 2, and 1. And then that one should be set. I'm going to go back to the matrices and select a different one to edit. So second function matrices or matrix, hit the edit, go down to B, and B is going to be this one. So I'll make sure that my numbers match up with it. Now I need to multiply these two matrices together. 
Um, if I were doing this by hand, I would take, they would form one two by two matrix. I would take the top of this one, multiply it by the left of here, and I'd get my upper left. So that'd be one times one, summed up with negative two times 0.85, I'd add those two together and I'd get the value, but, but with our calculators we can just go into second function and matrix and now select under names, I want to hit A and hit enter. And it comes back with an A in brackets. And then I'm going to do the same thing, just go down and select B and it'll say A next to B both in brackets, which implies times, enter it and it does it for me quickly. So what this ends up being, the, the product of those two is negative 0 0.7, negative 2, 0 0.85, and 1. And then I still have my mystery matrix here with my variable. And this is where the um, where now the, the manual part begins, or the more manual part, but still not too terrible. Um, if we multiply these two together, we're going to get, and that's, that's probably worth practicing, we're going to take the top here we're, and multiply it by the left to get our top left part. So 1 times negative 0.7 plus 0 times 0.85, so that goes away. We're going to take top and multiply it by the right and then add those two. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 plus 0 times 1 is still negative 2. We're going to take my bottom row and multiply it by the left column to get the bottom left. So di times negative 0.7 plus 1 times 0.85. And then we're going to take my bottom row, multiply it by the right column to get my bottom right part. So I get di times negative 2, negative 2 times di, plus 1 times 1. And that's what our final matrix would be. Now, if your calculator does handle uh, variables, and you're welcome to experiment with that, fine. Multiply together and get this from the beginning. Um, now the the last little bit here is sort of a, and I, I'm not up on all my matrix rules and all of that, so I'm just going to kind of hand wave and say a math instructor could perhaps teach you this better. But because of the general form of our matrices that we started with, the fact that their determinants, which is um, the product of these two minus the product of those is these are going to be zero, it's always one. That allows us to say that this should be as well. And ultimately what that means is that since we have a couple variables in here, if this is going to be one and zero, this term has to be equal zero by, to zero by the rules of matrix multiplication. Ultimately, we don't necessarily have to find all of the different four. I see a couple confused looks. I'm afraid I won't be able to explain it any better than just saying this is how it works. Matrices were not my favorite subject in, in math. Um, this one, though, tells us, allows us to solve for the um, image distance. So if we write that out, 0.5 negative 0 0.7 times image distance plus 0 0.85 equal to 0. I need to solve for the di. So I would subtract 0 0.85 for both sides. Then divide by my negative 0 0.7. And that should be 7, 0 if I was doing it. And I get 1.21 again. Remembering that I was working in meters, I'm just going to put the units there without carrying them through the whole way. I don't think I don't think our TIs can. They don't like it in in uh, in this. 
Now the other neat thing about this is that while this term has to be zero, and that allows us to solve for the image distance, this term ends up being our magnification. And this one I probably could answer, I just don't care to. Just believe me. Yeah? Why is the negative, uh, not negative term? Because I forget negative occasionally. It is. I subtracted this from both sides so it became negative, and then divide through by the negative to give us a positive overall. Our magnification here can also be used now that we know the what the di is. So magnification from this is negative 2 times our 1.21 plus 1 would be negative 1.41. A couple of you were talking back at our ori original part where we were looking at the thin lens equation. How would we find magnification from that, from the thin lenses and just treating the lens as its own? I'll come back to this in a moment. Negative di over dl. So if we want to look at magnification, We have negative, the di was 1.21 meters. The do was point, we started at 0.85. And magnification here is going to be again negative 1.41. So it works out the same. Now obviously you're not going to build a matrix to do a single mm -hmm. lens, and I wouldn't anticipate you should. This is to highlight, okay, here's the process that we do. In such a simple system, it makes no sense to use this. But let's, so we're going to use, do one more practice one as an example before then tomorrow will be just work time so you can work through some of their five or six problems. Questions on more what we were doing rather than why we were doing it, because the why is not. The mathematical why is not an explanation I am prepared to give, but the what I can definitely help with. Here's the thing. Um, like I said, I got this in grad school. By graduate school, um, I was getting a little disenfranchised, no not lots, but disenfranchised with being in school all the time. And um, we had this, this was my textbook, textbook uh, written by Dr. Alan Nussbaum, who was also the professor of the class, so he, he chose his own book to use. Um, not, he was a nice guy, I worked with him uh, after this class as in, in graduate school, um, and quite knowledgeable. Not the most gifted lecturer. And so I spent a fair bit of my time during that class daydreaming about things I'd like to buy. I was a graduate student, so I couldn't buy them, <laughs> but I could daydream. Um, and so I got through this class, and I did, you know, score-wise I did well, but understanding-wise, not my strongest class. Um, so the physics why, um, I have this book that you are welcome to look through <laughs> Um, but it's been a few years since I've even gone through it. I remember the how and, and not as much the exact why you can model it with this map. So, Laura, I need to get into that. Yeah. I think you'll be kind of a little apprehensive to take any more books than you. Yeah? Because I, I have a good one. I, I think I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. I gave him one with. Um, Degenerate perturbations the other day. Okay, let's let's move on and practice this with another um, setup. Let's now use two lenses in a setup that would be very complicated for us to use on its own. I'm going to find the image for this so I don't have to redraw it. You've got it on the next section in that note page. <coughs> I'm just going 
grab it from our homepage. So this is a two lens setup, sort of like what we did with um, with the microscope and telescope, but now they're overlapping a lot more. So the focal, so the both lenses are within the focal points of the other lens. So here's that. There it is. Open Office actually works okay. It doesn't have quite all the features anymore that it did back in the day, 10 years ago. It was actually quite a good option. Get what you're paying for. To a degree, it's, it's open source. It's got a lot of good features. It actually works a lot better if you're arranging things like this in pictures than the older versions of Word did, which is why I switched over to it. But that's neither here nor there. Um, our model or our task here is now to look at a more complicated lens system than we had before where we've got an object outside our first focal length but this lens the two lenses are close enough that their focal lengths are actually outside both lenses rather than having one in the middle like we had seen okay so let's look at the three regions we're going to trace the rays through here again region one will be right here that's a translation, it's going through air. Two is going to be interacting with this lens, so that is a refraction. Three, there's an air gap in, this, in between these lenses, so another translation. Four is another lens. And five is a final translation to somewhere out here, there's going to be, probably upside down, an image at some distance that I don't know yet. We're going to set this up in the same way, starting from the image and working backwards. So we would have, our system matrix will have a translation for, I'll put it as, five, as uh, the fifth step, a refraction. Working back, we've got a translation here in the middle. We've got another, tra another refraction, the, the first lens, and then we've got a translation going from the object to the first lens, and we do these all backwards because that's how matrices work. Science. Because science. Because math. I like that better. I like I like blaming and just saying because math is better than the science part. Um, so let's write these out based on what we've got. We've got, just like the last one, and very many of our last matrices will look basically the same. One, zero, it's a translation. So this is DI. Um, for this example, we have it in air, so again, it's over one for the index of refraction. We've got a lens next, a refraction. So that like the one zero one, and we go back and consult. Okay, this is lens two. Uh, an identical lens, so it's got the same focal length as before, which would so that'd make it zero, negative one over zero point five zero meters. Again, I'm just going to drop as long as I'm careful to be in meters. I'm just going to drop the units. We've got a translation in between the two lenses, and they are says consider setup above but this time add an identical lens so that's why I knew the focal length 0.3 meters after the first one so this is a translation that is 0 0.3 meters through air then we've got our second lens which is the same as this one so its matrix looks the same And finally, our translation, and you notice I keep getting smaller and smaller, back to the uh, point of origin, which we had set up just like the first one. So that's a one, zero, zero, one. And then this is our object distance, which was the 0.85 meters over the index of refraction, and it's in air, so that's over one. So what we want to do is we can certainly simplify these, or we can just enter these parts 
these four matrices into our uh, calculators. We've got this one and that one. This was our previous A. This was our previous B. I'm going to leave them there because it would be a pain to just rewrite them. But I do have to, when I'm multiplying these together, remember their order. And I'll put this one in C and this one in D. And when I calculate it then, I'm going to have to be careful to put them in this order that's shown on the board. And I will pause the video while we do that. We've only got three or four minutes, but maybe enough time. Yep. No, nope. we'll, we'll practice that again, and hopefully the second explanation will be better. Um, it was noted while we were away that this is the same as our A, so certainly you can just use that. Multiply A times whatever you call this one times A times B. Enter. And our final matrix, our system matrix, then becomes 1, 0, DI. One and then the product of all of these came out as negative 1.98, negative 2.8, 0 0.64, and 0 0.4. Um, and then the second question, and a good one as a as a refresher or a new thing for matrix people who aren't all that comfortable with matrices is how do we then go and multiply these two matrices? Now, one thing to simplify this is I really only need the bottom two to tell me everything about the image. So I don't need to get these two. When you want, though, um, part of a matrix, so let's say we want, and we will pause it there and pick it up.